All right, so I'm recording a quick video for you uh, to see how you can get started with WPF uh, test automation using Test Studio. So you will notice I have a simple WPF application called calculator.exe. It's just a simple application that's been created for demonstration purposes only. All I do is I enter some number here um, and another number here and I click this add button and that will give me the result. So this is a simple WPF application. Let's see how we can automate uh, this particular application. So I'm going to close this and uh, bring into view Test Studio. So once you launch Test Studio, it will look like this. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call this Calculator Test and say OK. Now, as I've done this, you can see uh, the project is created. The, I am right clicking on it and going to say add a new test. So amongst the various types of tests presented to me, I'm going to use the WPF test. And I'm going to name this verify correct addition. All right. so. This is, uh, we recommend the name to be descriptive enough. And next, what I'm going to do is when I'm going to double click on this and I will reach this uh, window. Now you can see before I can do the recording, I have to configure this. Now I click on the configure button and it asks me on the WPF application path, which is, uh, it's asking me to just drag and drop uh, the application into this window or better still I can just browse to that location. So I'm going to browse to that location where the exe file for the WPF application is located and I'm going to say open um, and uh, I'm not going to be recording any other uh, window state changes so I'm going to leave that uh, and I'll just say okay. There are some of these other active uh, WPF applications that are running in my machine so in case you wanted to select one from there, you can also do that. But well, the test studio is configured now to start the automation and I'll click on this record button. Now by clicking on this record window, a test automation window will open up. It's actually on uh, the other screen. I'll just drag it in. It's right here. Um, and as you can see, there is this uh, dock bar at the top, which allows me to uh, to do certain uh, actions in this one. Uh, essentially, this window is used for uh, identifying individual elements. So in here, this is the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to write 25 um, as the first uh, value. And next, I'm going to also add 25. If you notice, as I'm uh, typing these values, uh, the automation script is being recorded in the background. I'm going to click the Add button. And after I have clicked the add button, I get this uh, total. I want to verify that this total is actually 50. So I'm going to click on this, which is says enables, uh, enable or disable hover over highlighting. As I click on this, I go in here, I select this value and this blue bubble then pops up. This blue bubble really is our way of simplifying things for automation. Uh, and then there is an extra uh, extra, I would say, extension to the bubble also available called text block. So I'm going to click on that text block and I will get this quick, um, you know, action window. Now I'm going to use the quick tasks and in the quick tasks, you can get uh, quickly what all verifications are available. So I'm going to just going to say verify text content matches 50 and you will notice the same uh, verification is added in the automation window at the back or the automation script at the back. Uh, there is another very powerful uh, feature that I would like to introduce, which is called build verification. Uh, while this is a very simple uh, calculator window and a simple application, uh, it is also sometimes possible that this app, this uh, element will be hidden deep under somewhere in the uh, object hierarchy. So build verification is your friend. It will help you locate this particular element and write your verification on it. So the DOM Explorer really is a, is, is a part of the, uh, 
of the bill verification system and it will help you reach uh, whatever you want to within the object hierarchy. Uh, for example, I know that the value was 50 and I want to identify that 50 uh, and where was it located. So I can just click on, I can just click on the search lens and uh, after having entered the term 50, uh, it has found one element. I can click on this and as you can see, it will take me to the right level of depth where this element is available. Um, I could also then click on this and on the left window say uh, text block or uh, the property. So text block text is same as 50. The moment I click that, that verification was automatically added. I can also go ahead and uh, change uh, the uh, equality operators there. All right, so as I click OK, you will see the same uh, verification being added in the system once again. Once uh, you've done um, adding the tests, you can close simply the WPF uh, application window. So you can say disable the hover and then just close this. And this is pretty much all that needed to be done. Now in the steps, you can just disable the seventh step uh, because really it's a duplicate. And to run this automation, all you need to do is run this, uh, click this run button here. Um, it'll ask you to save it. So the test runner is here and the application also is here. As you can see, it is under automation and you can see the windows uh, running up and the verification being done. Uh, and as you can see, all six uh, steps have passed. Let's introduce uh, an error intentionally. So I will, okay, I can delete this step. Let us uh, edit this value to be something different than 50. So I'm just going to expand this and let's call this a hundred. Okay, uh, this is an intentional error we are introducing in the automation. Uh, all right, save this and again uh, run this uh, test. So the automation is running uh, in a different window as you can see, uh, probably not see, and you will notice the test has failed. You can see five passed out of six total. Uh, click on this and you can see what was the exact error that was encountered. Uh, 50 is not same as 100. Uh, there are images that it is showing you um, and visual tree, resolve failure. You can do all of those from right here. All right, so hopefully this has given you a good view. Uh, please go ahead. We have a very extensive documentation uh, available for Test Studio. Uh, do take advantage of the same. Uh, there are great things you can do with this. For example, introduce a data source for data binding. Uh, you can add logical steps. Uh, you can add uh, logical constructs like if then else loop. Uh, you can even write a coded step. Uh, or use composable tests using test test step. So go ahead and, and uh, uh, take the maximum benefit of test studio. Thank you.